If anytime we're collecting data um, that is related to individual people, I think it's important for us to set clear guidelines around how that data is being collected because it does become a privacy issue. And also for something of this magnitude, I think it, it is important that it went through city council, but also there was real engagement with the community so they understand what's happening um, and how that data is being collected. So I have significant concerns about this. I do understand the importance of implementing technology um, to um, increase safety in our city, uh, but this wasn't the best approach. So I, I can't speak to the process. I'm not in city government right now, but I can say with respect to the technology that I think that uh, technology such as cameras can make our city safer. And uh, I believe that there is a way to do it in a way that respects civil liberties and a person's right to privacy, but also helps the police better do their jobs. Uh, and so I'm very open to and supportive of the use of this kind of technology to help make our city safer. You might not be in city government, but you certainly are an observer of what's going on. Do you think it's right for the cameras to be turned on and used for a year without having gone through the city council? Uh, again, uh, I wasn't around for the procurement, and I don't know exactly how the, the process came to be that they were hired, but I think the technology can be of value to, sit to the city uh, government and to public safety. Uh, when, when, what do you think about the privacy concerns of folks? Because these cameras, it's not like the red light cameras, where it takes a picture of you after you've run a red light, right? This is taking photos um, of every car on the road, uh, not just if they have committed a crime. What, what do you think of those concerns? Uh, my understanding of the technology, and I think that there's a, a perception, you know, with any sort of surveillance uh, technology, which is a real, uh, a real concern, uh, but that the data is stored for a very short period of time, that it's run against another database of either wanted criminals or missing children or anything else, that uh, I think if it saves one life or helps return one kidnapped child, uh, that that temporary uh, check of the plate against a known database uh, can yield public safety improvements and progress and I think could great, great comfort to someone who's a victim of crime or God forbid lost a child or something like that. So uh, I think that they can be addressed and I think it's uh, a good idea for the either the city or the police department to continue to explain how it works to debunk or demystify what might be happening to put people's concerns at ease. There is no clarity on what information they're capturing, what they're doing with that information, what and where that information ends up, how long is that information stored for. Technology is moving at a very fast pace and technology can be incredibly helpful. And I'm sure that that camera technology is incredibly helpful in solving a lot of crime. But there needs to be regulation because we cannot let our public policy and our privacy be determined by private vendors. And we have a state uh, legislature, uh, Rep. Solomon of Warwick introduced legislation this past session to uh, regulate those cameras, and the, not so much the camera, but the data that is collected from the cameras. That legislation died, and the city council hasn't had an opportunity to weigh in either. And I think, look, we all want safer streets, and we all want to leverage technology to the, to, to the best of its ability, but these things need to be regulated. We don't want to end up in a situation where our private information is being bought and sold on the market in ways that we aren't even aware of, because years ago we thought it was a great idea to get some free cameras.